Hello again, my fellow pilots and aircraft maintenance personnel. Your host is always Haysam Ali, and I'm an aviation technical instructor. Welcome to my aviation nuggets for today. Today, I'm going to recall the engine fire procedure. The engine fire procedure and what will happen if you release the engine fire push button. What will happen if you release the engine fire push button? You know that the Airbus A320 main aircraft engine, if they suffer from an engine fire, it's for the V2500 engine or the CFM engine, you need to do the engine fire procedure. Engine fire procedure. Okay, so how you can recall the engine fire procedure? How you can recall the engine fire procedure? You need to remember isolations and fire extinguish. To extinguish an engine fire, which is an external fire or nacelle fire, you need to recall the procedure under isolations and fire extinguish. All the steps you will do at first, it is for isolation. And then the final uh, procedure or the final step is to extinguish the fire from the Asian to bush button. From the Asian to bush button, you need to remember that each engine in the Airbus A320 is having or uh, is having two cartridge, Asian 1 and Asian 2. They are located in the pylon. Okay, everybody. So, through the engine fire isolation procedure, you will release the engine fire push button. And this one is a master isolation push button. Master isolation push button. When you release this engine fire push button, you will isolate many sources that can propagate the fire. Okay, like hydraulic, like pneumatic like the FADIC. Okay, so this is a master isolation, master isolation. Okay, right, so during the engine fire procedure, the engine fire push button switch is manually released out. This triggers several automatic sequence simplifying further crew actions and the system monitoring. So this engine fire push button when it is released, they will simplify many steps the pilot need to do. Okay, everybody, for isolation. Okay, so when you release this engine fire push button, the first thing to happen is isolation of hydraulic supply, fuel supply, electrical power, and pneumatic power. Pneumatic power. Okay, so as you can see here, releasing the fire push button will allow the agent to be ready and the squib light come on the agent push button. So when you release this push button, agent 1 and agent 2 will have a squib and squib. So the agent are ready now to be sublight. So squib light on indicating bottle percussion is available. Bottle percussion is available. So only when you release the fire bush button, bottle percussion will be ready. Bottle percussion or agent percussion will be ready. Also releasing the fire bush button will cancel the CRC. Cancel the continuous repetitive chime. Oral warning cancelled. And this is very important to allow the pilot to calm down and focus on the procedure because the sound or the CRC may take the pilot into panic. Okay, everybody. So also releasing the fire push button, flight warning computer, management of warning and the messages. And also releasing the fire push button, cut off FADIC power supply. Cut off FADIC power supply through so through the engine interface unit, engine control, power supply, cut off. So you need to take care. Only you will release the engine fire push button in case of an engine fire. But in case of a reported tail by fire, you don't need to release the engine fire push button. And please don't release the engine fire push button in case of a reported, in, in case of a reported tail by fire. 
because in a tail by fire you need to crank the engine and if you release the fire push button you cannot crank the engine because you will cut off FADIC power supply okay so you need to remember that releasing the fire push button through the engine interface unit FADIC will cut off and engine control power supply cut off also when you release the fire push button it will confirm the closure of the low pressure fuel valve in the wing so fuel will cut off low pressure fuel shut off valve will close and also the fuel return to tank fuel diverter and return to tank valve or engine fuel return valve will close and no fuel will return from the wing into the air sorry from the engine into the wing engine fuel return valve will close and no fuel will return from the engine to the wing this is for the heat management system heat management system so again when you release the fire push button fuel low pressure shut off valve close and engine fuel return valve close okay everybody so what about the air system also when you release the fire push button air system is stopped so as you can see here engine bleed valve close and the backflow control valve close engine bleed valve close and the backflow control valve close so what about the electrical power when you release the engine fire push button idg de-energized not disconnected idg will de-energized okay finally when you release the engine fire push button, hydraulic power or hydraulic fire shut off valve will close. Hydraulic fire shut off valve will close, preventing hydraulic fluid from going into an engine on fire because the hydraulic fluid is a flammable fluid. If it will reach an engine on fire, the fire will propagate and you cannot extinguish the fire. So all these steps, everybody, is simplified by releasing the engine fire push button and when you release the engine fire push button you will hear a master caution saying that sim some systems are deactivated some systems are deactivated only after finishing the isolation procedure like fire push button release you can extinguish the fire using the halon gas bottle or cartridge agent one and agent two and as we say only when you release the fire push button bottle percussion will be available and you can see squib on agent one and squib on agent two thank you for your good listening and always fly safely and maintain your aircraft very safely from Cairo, Egypt, your host was Haysam Ali, and I'm an aviation technical instructor. Please stay tuned for an upcoming session like this. Thank you and goodbye.